I am delighted to welcome you to this Crash My Lecture Series on Radiation Oncology. My name is Claire Poole and I am an Assistant Professor and Head of Clinical Education here at Trinity College Dublin in the discipline of Radiation Therapy. I am a specialist in Radiation Therapy who conducts research and works with experts worldwide to educate students and the public on the role of radiation oncology and the treatment of cancer. I'm looking forward to sharing information with you about radiation oncology and the patient journey through it. Cancer is a disease that affects many families and is one of the leading causes of morbidity and mortality globally. The World Health Organization report that in the next 20 years, the number of new cases is to rise by 70% worldwide. To fully understand the role of radiation oncology, in the treatment of cancer patients, we must review it in relation to the patient. In this lecture, I will look at the treatment journey for a prostate cancer patient, and we will also take a look at the role of radiation therapists and other healthcare professionals responsible for a patient's care. Firstly though, what is radiation therapy? It is a painless cancer treatment delivered using linear accelerator machines. There is one here in the image behind us. This is the gantry head where the radiation is delivered to the patient and this is the couch the patient lies on. The radiation oncology can also be referred to as radiation therapy. In this lecture, we will refer to it as radiation therapy. Modern radiation therapy is used as a treatment to cure cancer across many sites in the human body. And it is an effective treatment that can accurately and safely treat a majority of cancer patients through individualized patient treatment plans. This means that the treatment is tailored to each individual person and depends on each person's needs. Cancer is now seen as a chronic disease which means people are living with cancer for a very long time. Here are the stats from Globecon and it shows the estimated number of new cases of cancer in both males and females for 2018. The, eternal, the International Agency for Research on Cancer estimates that one in five men and one in six women worldwide will develop cancer over the course of their lifetime. A growing aging population globally and an increase in exposure to cancer risk factors are cited as the main causes for this. It is generally accepted that 50 to 60% of cancer patients should receive radiation therapy as part of their cancer management, either as a treatment for cure or for symptom control. Radiation therapy is an important part of multi-modality cancer treatment, which means using more than one type of treatment to treat cancer. Why should we choose radiation therapy? Research has shown us that 40% of cancer cures have radiation therapy as part of their treatment. This might mean that it is given on its own as a sole treatment or with others, such as chemotherapy or surgery. This is known as multi-modality cancer treatment. Evidence has demonstrated that one in two cancer patients potentially benefit from radiation therapy. It is a very important treatment that we advocate for here at Trinity College through our public engagement and research. In order to illustrate the role of radiation therapy in cancer treatments, we are going to take a fictional patient case and look at the patient journey through a typical radiotherapy department. We will review the case of a 71 year old man who has been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Stage two, T, two, B, N, zero, M, zero, Gleason score seven. He has been referred for definitive external beam radiotherapy of 74 grey in 37 fractions 
over an eight week period. Treatment is normally given Monday to Friday, five days per week. Definitive treatment means that radiation therapy is the only modality of treatment going to be given. Treatment plans will often differ and are dependent on the stage and grade of your cancer. In this patient's case, it is recommended that he has radiation therapy to his prostate gland. So here are some images just to explain exactly where the prostate is in the main male pelvis. So you'll see on this sagittal site, this is the front of a person's body and this is the posterior. And the prostate sits in here with the bladder sitting in front and the rectum or back passage sitting behind. We will now look at this again on an axial slice. So this is your left hand side and this is the right. This is the ant um, and this is the post. And this is a 3D image created by our virtual simulation software. And we can see here the bladder is in blue. The prostate is in green. The pink is the penile bulb and the red is the rectum all outlined and these, these two here are the femoral heads. You can also see this on a lateral image and the reason I'm showing you this image is to show you how close the bladder and the rectum are to the prostate. It is impossible to avoid them. So in this case the prostate would be referred to as the target and then your bladder and your rectum would be referred to as organs at risk. <clears throat> Another important factor in determining what treatment is most appropriate is the stage and grade of a tumour. The stage is the anatomic stage of the disease, that is how far the tumour is spread within the body and the grade describes the extent to which the tumour cells resemble the normal tissue, that is the level of differentiation. So for in this example, you see that one means the cancer cells resemble normal cells um, as close as possible. The lower the Gleason score, the better prognosis for the patient as the cancer resembles normal cells, with the higher grade meaning that the cells are very abnormal. The Gleason store, the Gleason score is the addition of the primary grade, that is the cell type that makes up the largest area of the tumour and a secondary grade, the next largest. A score of two to six means it's low grade tumour that is well differentiated. Sevens means it is moderately differentiated and eight to 10 poorly differentiated. For this patient, the grading is specific to prostate cancer and is known as this Gleason score. Before we begin the patient journey, we will take a few minutes to meet the team of specialists that work with, um, that work with each other and patients to ensure the safest and most effective treatment. The first professional we're going to discuss is the radiation oncology nurse. They liaise with patients and their families on a daily basis. They normally also meet them for their first appointment um, within the department and they will refer patients as necessary to appropriate services. They will also review them um, <clears throat> weekly to, to manage their side effects and um, refer them on as needed. We will discuss this further later on. The next member of the team is the consultant radiation oncologist who is responsible for assessing whether radiation therapy is appropriate for a patient. They support patients and their families throughout radiation therapy planning and treatment and follow up with patients after treatment is given. And this follow up can take many years. It can, the normal would be around five. However, it can vary depending on the treatment site. The next member of the team is the radiation therapist who is also known as an RTT. 
They work with other healthcare professionals, such as the radiation oncologist, in both pre-treatment and treatment delivery areas. They meet patients daily during their treatment and scan and image patients using CT or MRI machines to either plan or verify the patient position. They prepare dose calculations and the delivery of radiation therapy to patients. They support patients and assist them in the management of their side effects. The next member of the team here is the medical physicist. The medical physicist is responsible for optimizing settings and configurations on the unit. They ensure machines are safe for treatment. They have a key responsibility for all radiation protection ensuring a safe working and treating environment for anyone who attends a radiation therapy department. Finally, we have the radiobiologist. These, these are people that you would never see, however, have a fundamental role in the delivery of radiation therapy treatment. With their research, they have helped doctors define the daily dose of radiation that can be delivered safely they determine how many doses, that's fractionations as well, that should be given. And they also warn against patients missing treatment. So our role would be to make clear to patients that when they are coming for eight weeks of treatment, they need to come daily. They cannot just take breaks. It's important for what we refer to as tumor control probability. That means to get the best result out of the treatment you need to attend daily. So we are now going to look specifically at the pathway through radiation therapy and the first part of this journey is referred to as pre-treatment. CT scan gives a snapshot of the patient's internal anatomy and is used to plan the patient's course of treatment. Internal anatomy of the prostate must be the same at each fraction to ensure accurate delivery of the planned treatment. But bladder and rectal filling can vary based on the body's physiology. So pre-treatment preparation measures are needed. For prostate cancer, the first step of the journey is the pre-preparation for the first appointment. Patients are asked to empty their bladder and rectum or back passage. Once they have done this, they will be asked to drink a number of glasses of water, usually um, within 10 minutes, and then they hold that water for about 30 minutes. And then they will also be asked to um, either do a bowel motion or either to use an anemone to empty the rectum. In some departments, it's not done that regularly in Ireland. They are given a balloon type of device in order to ensure that the rectum is at a standard size for treatment. Another way of verifying the position of the patient, um, and in particular the prostate, which is a movable gland, is the use of small markers called fiducials. These gold markers here can be um, typically made from gold, can be inserted into the prostate. This procedure would normally take um, place a week before the pre-treatment or CT scan. Not every patient will have these fiducials, however, they are quite common. Once the patient is ready to be positioned on a CT scanner similar to the one in this image, so this is a typical scanner here, RTTs play a vital role in deciding the patient's most optimal treatment positions based on their patient's specific needs and their experience. In radiation therapy, it is important that the patient remains at the same treatment position daily so that the radiation therapy treats the same place so that the tumour in the prostate gets its maximum dose. A failure to keep the patient in the same position may result in overdosing of the normal tissue 
which in this case would be the bladder and the rectum, and underdosing the tumour, therefore minimising the ability to treat the tumour effectively. In this case, the patient would be immobilised by placing his feet into one of the following devices. These items which are referred to as the foot fix and the knee rest are, are used to keep the patient in the same position daily. It is important when you are positioning a patient that you keep the patient comfortable um, because a non-comfortable patient will move um, involuntarily and that will affect your treatment position. So, one of the key things is to get the position reproducible for each treatment. Once you have your patient in position, you will scan this patient. Um, and the optimal, once the optimal position has been decided and you have put on your marks, you will give the patient little permanent tattoo marks here at both sides and what we call anterior at the top. And this, these are reference marks which allows you then to set the patient up when they get to the treatment couch. The next step is planning. At this stage, the radiation oncologist will decide the exact target volume. The target volume is the tumour together with a small margin around it. A safety margin is applied as the prostate is a movable organ and it is moved by the rectum and um, the bladder. And the margin ensures that it is always enclosed in the radiation therapy field. So you will see here that this red is a volume that is being treated. The radiation therapist or RTT will then plan the patient's treatment on a planning system. And they will do this by outlining what is known as the organs at risk. And this can vary from patient to patient. So you will see here that all the different organs have been outlined. So you have the head of femurs, you have the bladder, the prostate, the seminal vesicles, and also the rectum. Once these have been outlined, and the radiation oncologist has put on the volume, then the RTT will design the most suitable plan for this patient. Once the plan has been created, it will be checked by the medical physicist, and then the radiation oncologist will approve the plan, and the patient will be given a start date for treatment. This planning process normally takes about two weeks after the patient has been scanned. And just to illustrate the dose that you will see um, when you are treating a patient is you want to get this is your target here where this red is. You want to get the highest dose in here and then you will always have lower dose. So this blue represents 30% of the dose the red is 100% of the dose. However, we know that this is a very acceptable plan from the research that has been carried out by radiobiologists that the body is able to manage that low dose um, entering the body over the fractionated treatment. Now we will look at the, how radiation therapy is delivered. It is delivered using a series of beams um, in a personalised plan. Before you give any treatment to a patient, you need to verify the patient position. This is an essential part of radiation therapy treatment. This can be done on the linear accelerator by using an imaging device that takes a cone beam CT. The cone beam CT uses a cone beam 
radiating from an x-ray source in the shape of a cone that covers a large area of the patient in one rotation of the gantry. The image taken is then overlaid on the CT reference scan from planning. Radiation therapists use these images to ensure that the prostate gland is in the same place for treatment. If the bladder or rectum size are different from your personalized treatment plan, then it is expected that the radiation therapist would note this and the patient may be asked to get off the bed and to redo their pre-preparation treatment. This um, slide here shows <clears throat> the CT scan reference and the comb beam CT. And through this checkered motion, they can check that the volumes are the same to what they were when they were in planning. And at the bottom of the screen, if there's tiny movements, these will, these will come up at the bottom of the screen and they, the radiation therapist will decide whether they can make these moves or whether the patient needs to be taken off the bed to redo their, their pre-preparation. Once you are happy that the treatment has been verified, you will then treat the patient. Radiation therapy is delivered using a series of beams. In this personalised plan, there are seven beams used. These beams are selected to ensure that the target volume receives the dose prescribed by the radiation oncologist and that the organs at risk receive as low a dose as possible. Prostate radiation therapy can be delivered using many treatment techniques. In this example, we show the intensity modulated radiation therapy or IMRT technique. In IMRT, five, seven or nine beams are typically used for treatment. The number used depends on the anatomy of the prostate, which is different from one patient to another. <clears throat> In this example that you see here, the video, there are seven beams being delivered around the patient, which means the gantry will move from one angle to the next. This movement is controlled by the radiation therapist both inside and outside the treatment room. Here is a video from the discipline of radiation therapy demonstrating a virtual treatment for prostate cancer. Please note that in order to show these aspects clearly, we are focusing solely on the pelvis of the patient. Therefore, the entire patient is not visible in this video. So you see this is the beams going around, one from every angle to get your dose distribution and they're all aimed around the prostate. And this is all the beams at the end, which reflects the dose distribution that I showed you previously. So once the treatment has been completed, um, we will look at the review clinics. During radiation therapy, patients come for treatment daily and are reviewed in clinics on a routine basis. Radiation therapists build a rapport with patients as they treat them daily. They are in the optimum position to manage patient side effects, both physically and psychologically, through open and directed discussion. They can refer patients to other disciplines and advocate for the patient. Common side effects for prostate cancer are listed here. Urinary side effects that include having to empty the bladder more often than usual, either during the day or the night, or both. They also may have increased frequency called nocturia, or they might have increased pain. Rectal side effects include bleeding when using the toilet, a feeling of fullness in the rectum or a feeling of emptying when it's not actually required. Patients may also experience diarrhea or constipation, constipation and they may also experience some sexual dysfunction and this is because the penile bulb is being treated. The, the most common sex, sexual dysfunction is erectile dysfunction.
and patients can often be very embarrassed about these side effects. So it's very important that we ask patients about them so that we can help them manage them. All of these side effects can be effectively managed by the multidisciplinary team and usually patients can continue to maintain their normal activities during treatment. Even though these treatments will occur while the patient is on tre treatment, they may also continue while the patient has finished their treatment. When a patient finishes treatment, the radiation therapy keeps on working, even though they are not receiving the treatment daily. Due to this and the side effects that may continue to occur, the patient will be reviewed on a continuous basis. And this can differ depending on the treatment that you are having. But it's quite common in radiation oncology for a patient to be reviewed with follow-up continuing for a minimum of five years. And it can be longer. In addition to the treatments that I have discussed today, there's lots of modern innovations in um, radiation therapy, which is continuously developing. Here in Trinity, we are dedicated to researching this area in our research group, Applied Radiation Therapy Research. With our national and international collaborative partners, we conduct extensive research into oncology molecular oncology, radiation therapy in practice, and radiation therapy health service. I thank you for joining me today for a quick overview of a cancer patient and their radiotherapy journey. If you would like further information, please review our website, which I have included here. You can also email me directly at poolc at tcd.ie, or you can use my Twitter handle, we also have a free course on uh, Future Learn, which is called An Introduction to Radiation Oncology from Diagnosis to Survivorship. You can register on this course for free, um, and this course is aimed at patients, and it explains to you in more detail what is radiation oncology um, and how it's being managed. Thanks again for joining me today. Thank you.